there's a lot of options for different types of microphones. In this video, I want to highlight or showcase a particular type of microphone, that being a shotgun mic. In this particular case, this is a new mic from Asden. It's called the SGM250H. Just kind of talk about why a shotgun mic might be the best choice if you can only get one mic, especially just to start out with. Shotgun mics, in my opinion, are probably the most versatile mic that you can get because, as you can see, I've got this one relatively close to me. So you can use it as an on-camera vocal mic, similar to how you would use a broadcast style dynamic microphone or a studio large diaphragm condenser microphone like this one. Or, of course, you can just boom these out of the shot. So if you want to have a clean shot, then you can just boom these up and overhead like I am doing now. For my own videos, I like to bounce back and forth between having a clean shot like this versus having a shot with microphone in it. It just kind of depends on the vibe of the video. If I feel like it's more casual, mic in the shot, no big deal. But if I want it to be more visual, visually oriented, and maybe there's more B-roll, maybe there's more angles, etc., mic out of the shot. So in this video, I'm gonna switch back and forth between having the Asden SGM250H close to me and also having it out of the shot. Of course, it's gonna sound different, but I feel like with a little bit of work, you can get both to sound really good. I'm running this microphone directly into the Rodecaster Pro with no processing applied in the Rodecaster, and I'm not doing any post-processing either. I will do some post-processing at some point in the video, and I'll let you know with some text on screen, but this is just what the microphone sounds right out of the box. Another microphone that I didn't mention, which would be an option, would be some kind of lav microphone. So this is just the lav microphone itself, but of course you're going to need to connect this into something to record. There's a lot of options for that, wireless systems or discrete little audio recorders like the Tascam DR10L, uh, which is where this one comes from. Lav mics are great options, but they introduce some potential problems. <laughs> I've often messed up recordings with lav mics because I forget that I have them on. My clothes will rustle around and just kind of ruin the recording. Therefore, a shotgun mic might be the easiest and kind of like no fuss way to get good audio, especially if you're just starting out wanting to know what kind of microphone you should buy. I really want to harp on this idea of flexibility and the way that you can use these microphones in a lot of different situations that you can't with microphones like this or like the SM7B. You will notice a difference in the sound when the microphone is further away from you. I guess the technical terms for that would be kind of a dry sound versus a wet sound. Dry would be with the mic close to you. It's definitely eliminating much more of the ambient noise in your environment versus the wet sound of a microphone that's a little bit further away or much further away is going to be picking up much more of the ambient sound. One isn't necessarily better than the others. So I don't want you to get fixated on the idea that in eliminating every noise possible or eliminating reverb, which is a quality of a boom mic that isn't bad. It sounds more natural. So if you just go into any room in your house or any room in any building, or maybe you go to the Grand Canyon or something, you're going to hear reverb. It's natural. It's what we're accustomed to. The dry sound of a microphone close mic is not quite natural. Probably the only voice that you're accustomed to hearing that way is the one inside your head, which isn't to say that those are bad either, but I don't want you to be like, well, yeah, the, the close mic sound is better because it eliminates more reverb and it eliminates more of the room tone. Another point that I think is important to consider, not only should you not really get fixated on owning one particularly awesome microphone that everybody else has or that you really like, unless you do comparison videos, then your audience is going to get accustomed to whatever microphone in whatever environment that you're recording in and that's going to be natural to them and natural to you and they're not going to be listening to your video and being like oh it would sound much better if he or she were using this mic as opposed to whichever mic it is you're using as long as you're not doing something egregiously wrong to the recording and you record it well and you edit it well then it's going to be fine let me know what you think what do you like better do you like it boomed overhead or do you like it in the shot and why? A little bit about this one. Asden did send me this microphone. I'm not under any obligation to make any particular kind of video. They're not going to see it before I publish it. But this is apparently a pre-production version. At the time that I'm recording this video, this is not available yet, although you can pre-order it, but I'm sure it's going to be available shortly after I finish this video. They said that the microphone is, is, is done. There's not going to be any changes to the microphone itself, but what they might change or what they will change is the foam windscreen that, it, that I have here 
Um, I think they'll make it a little bit softer because they said this one tends to, or has the potential of like getting crushed or deformed because it's, I don't know, just the material. I really like this windscreen. It's very high quality, so hopefully they won't change it too much. I got a retail box, so I'm pretty sure I probably got everything that you're going to get with the microphone. It comes with this little carrying case. It's just a leather case with some padding in it. It comes with this mic clip I'm using right now on this mic stand, and the clip also has a 5 8 to 3 8 inch thread adapter. Pretty decent amount of accessories for the price that, that you pay, but more importantly, it's a relatively low to mid-budget shotgun microphone. So like any kind of microphone, there's a huge price range with shotgun microphones. This one I think is going to be $300. So not exactly what I would call cheap, but you can spend more than a thousand, two thousand dollars on a really good shotgun microphone like this. So it is cheap in comparison. This is a new version of an of a microphone that is also called the SGM 250, but this is the 250H. The H stands for hypercardioid. So instead of having a cardioid polar pattern, this one has a hypercord, this one has a hypercardioid polar pattern, which is just a little bit narrower than cardioid, which is great for a shotgun microphone, and that you can boom it a little bit further away and it's gonna just kind of narrow its focus and just home in on your voice essentially. I mean it doesn't really home in, but <laughs> It's kind of a, a metaphor, I suppose. Another difference between this one and the older version is that it has a longer interference tube. The interference tube is a feature of shotgun microphones. It's designed to reject noise from the sides, and that's where you'll see all those little vents or little ridges along a shotgun microphone. That's where the interference tube is. This one has a longer interference tube than the older version. The older version also had the ability to power it with a battery, probably a double A, but this 250H doesn't have an optional battery powering option, so you will need to power it via XLR from your audio device. This also has a low cut filter or a high pass switch, however you like to refer to it. Right now it's in the flat mode, but if you engage that switch, it's going to start rolling off frequencies below 75 Hertz. So it's not a particularly aggressive low cut filter, and as you can probably hear, it doesn't really do much to change the quality of the recording. So if you're recording voice, it's not really going to matter that much because there's not a whole lot of human voices that have a lot of information at or, below, at or below 75 hertz anyway. You could probably just engage that all the time and just forget about it. So I'm just going to turn that off. And obviously you're hearing what the mic sounds with and without the windscreen. And if you can't tell, it's probably hard to tell, I'm about... I don't know, seven inches away from the front of the microphone. I don't have any other really relevant shotgun microphones to compare this one to, so I'm not gonna do any comparisons. So you're just gonna have to evaluate how you think this microphone sounds in isolation. A couple other specifications about this microphone. It's pretty standard for a condenser mic. It's sensitive from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Frequency response chart is, is relatively flat. There's kind of a boost in the low frequencies. It's pretty flat in the mid to mid highs and then it starts getting boosted up in those mid highs and high frequencies, but it's not anything too crazily sculpted. While I have the microphone close to me, let's go ahead and do a couple of tests, starting with plosives. With the windscreen on, Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. No windscreen. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. The windscreen does a really good job. So one thing that you can do to minimize plosives with any microphone is to point it at a little bit of an angle at your mouth so that the air leaving your mouth kind of goes past it and not right into it. I'll do the same without the windscreen. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Probably at this close distance, it's still pointed right at my mouth. It's not gonna change the tone or the frequency response of the microphone too much. So you can definitely use it this way. But if you do have it boomed out of shot, so it's further away from you, you really wanna make sure that you're not going out of the most sensitive area of the microphone because it's definitely gonna change the way that it sounds. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and rotate the microphone around so you can hear how it rejects sounds from different sides. So this is obviously in the front and this is speaking directly into the side of the microphone and then rotating it around to the rear three quarters of the microphone and then directly into the rear of the microphone. This is how it sounds. Last thing I'll do with the microphone here is get really close to it and you can hear the proximity effect. This might be a good option if you want to get more of a voiceover quality or radio tone with this microphone. I'm just maybe a few inches away from the front of the microphone and you'll definitely need to be careful with plosives. If you want to use the microphone like this, definitely use the windscreen. 
and or get a pop filter. It's nice that you have this clip included because you can attach this to really any mic stand, any boom arm, any standard boom pole. So it's great to have, you can get up and running with this microphone, but I would suggest, especially if you are gonna use it as a location microphone, like a typical shotgun mic use case, you're definitely gonna to wanna to get a shock mount for it. And the reason for that is you're obviously handling the boom pole. These could be susceptible to transmitting that handling noise to the recording. So I'm gonna test out how much this does or doesn't reject that handling noise. So just holding the mic clip, I'll just kind of move it around, see how much of my, of that noise it's picking up. And then if I just handle the microphone itself, I'm just gonna rotate it. So my fingers are just kinda doing that, rotating it, how much of that is it picking up. I'm really impressed with this microphone overall. I have been wanting to get a new shotgun mic for a while because the one that I've been using, I'm not a big fan of it. I'm really liking this one. What I particularly like that separates it from the older one that I was using, I'm not gonna mention it because you can't buy it anymore, so it's not really relevant, is that it doesn't have much of any self noise. So really any noise you're hearing in the recording is gonna be a result of the room that I'm in. My light over here has a fan that's constantly on and maybe the HVAC outside the window there, that's pretty much it. So it's really quiet which is essential for a shotgun microphone. Having its own noise on the recording is just not a good quality of any microphone, but in particular, a shotgun microphone. And overall, I think it has a pretty clean and natural sound. It's not overly sculpted in any weird ways. It is designed and made in Japan. I always appreciate when things aren't farmed out to some other factory in another part of the world. I just feel like that the quality, quality control is probably better. Maybe not, but I just get that impression. And it also comes with a 10-year warranty. And I feel like companies not gonna offer a 10-year warranty unless they're really standing behind that product and confident that it's gonna be something that's durable and good. And that's really it. I just wanted to highlight the fact that, again, if you are starting out in particular and you're concerned about what kind of microphone to get, of course, a lot of people are using mics like the SM7B or maybe large diaphragm condenser microphones. And these are great. If you can afford them, or if you want to get a couple of different types of microphones for different use cases, that's all gravy. But again, if you're just starting out, you want something that's a little bit more flexible in terms of how you utilize it, you should definitely take a look at a shotgun mic.